Hey everybody, it's Brad from Johnson Small Engines, better known as the One Hand Mechanic. If I can do it, you can too. Today we are working on a Briggs & Stratton Intec 16 horsepower overhead valve engine. This is going to go for many of the Briggs & Stratton overhead valve engines. We're going to be showing you, in my opinion, how to replace the carburetor today. Okay, so the tools we need today, from left to right, I always use my electric ratchet. We have uh, a couple gaskets here and the carburetor, obviously. 3 8 ratchet, quarter inch ratchet, whatever you guys have that'll fit a 7 16 socket, 3 8 socket, 5 16 socket, a T45 socket for two bolts, a quarter inch nut driver, a couple pair of pliers. I like this uh, clip removal tool, it helps get the fuel lines off. Fuel line shutoff tool, and I'm also going to put in a fuel shutoff, an inline fuel shutoff. That's always a good thing to have in front of the carburetor so you know you don't have any issues with the carburetor flooding and then getting it to your engine, ruining it. So let's go ahead and get this started. Okay, so we gotta take the engine housing off to get to the carburetor the easiest way. I'm gonna lift up the seat because we have to get to a couple bolts. Take off the air filter. And I did, um, I did do a little work on this before, so this actually, uh, he put a new air filter in it, but he actually had his pre-filter in the wrong direction. We're gonna, I'm gonna put a new pre-filter on for him, but it's always good to change your air filters when you're doing a carburetor like this. And it does look like he did put a new fuel line, a fuel filter in there because he thought maybe that's why. So we're going to go ahead and leave that in. That's fine. Let's go ahead and take the front. This is a Torx T45. You don't have to take them all the way out. You just have to take them far enough out. There's a little, the cover will just pop up past there. Some of them had the little slots and some of them had holes, so you may have to take them off. Then we have one here. We have a three, these are three socket, take these off. I'm gonna take the fuel pump off. If you do have a fuel pump, it's just easier to take these off. It's also easier to get to this one. And take this one. And this should just come up. Oh, there is also, right down here, there's usually a quarter inch screw that goes into a, a hole right there that goes into a mounting bracket this one doesn't have it a lot of them did so make sure you check here before you take this off or it won't come off and it should just slide up now also on top of your carburetor inlet right here there is an o-ring so make sure that your o-ring is in good shape this one is in good shape i'll pull it out a little bit for you so you can see that if the O-ring's broken or missing, you want to make sure you put a new O-ring in there. So here's the carburetor, and what we're going to do is we're going to crimp the fuel line right here. I'm going to go ahead and take this clamp off. This is where my clip removal tool comes in handy. You can get, get, get right in there and not ruin the fuel line. So we're going to have to take off this nut here nut here and there's 716 socket and it has a breather tube right here this breather tube here connects to the back and you just have to basically push it off the back side pretty straightforward just like that go from the back Okay, so now that you have the nuts, the, the cover off, this cover here also has a O-ring in it, okay? And this O-ring should be replaced. I do them every time just because they get crushed. You could probably get away with using them if you wanted to, but I just replace them, so we're gonna replace that O-ring. Now, you need a 5 16 socket to take these studs out. That will let this drop off. Now, at this point, what I normally do is I'll take off this one spring right here and make sure you're not, okay, so it, I can feel the throttle. Usually put your throttle down in slow. Put your throttle down in slow. I felt a lot of tension on this right here and I noticed that the throttle was up in fast position. If you put your throttle down in slow position, you won't be fighting this. But I was telling you about getting this little spring off right here. And I'm gonna just take a very small pair of pliers. You be careful not to bend it. It should just pull up like so and then out, out of the way for now. Now this now this right here is your choke. This is what pushes your choke on and off on your carburetor. And this will just slide out with the carburetor. And then we have to just, you have to turn the carburetor to get it off of this hook. It's like a hook. This stays on, this will come off with the carburetor. Let's go ahead and take these off. Now 
Now we also have to, before we do this, we should definitely disconnect. This has a fuel shut off solenoid right here. And we definitely want to just pull this down out of the way. Probably should have did it first. All right, so that's off to the side. I just hold the bottom of the carburetor steady while I'm taking off these bolts. Now, this will slide out like so, all right? And then you have a little hook. It's kind of like a 90 degree U, like here. And then you just have to, it just slides, slides right off. So basically, now be careful, I just got hung up on my spring here. <laughs> Try to keep that like this so you know when you put the new one on. Okay, so we have the, new, the old one on the bench. This is the new one and it has definitely has changed. So they, uh, this is now, the Briggs of Stratton actually is the, is the same as a Nikki. So they, uh, they went to uh, one style it looks like. But everything else is the same. Just remember when you take your carburetor off you're probably going to have a whole bunch of fuel in the bowl of the carburetor just use a whole bunch of rags and then i'm just going to drain them into rags the choke lever here and it goes from bottom up and it's the last hole right there so you just have to match it up just make sure you're getting it back into the new carburetor correctly like so now we can just go ahead and take this over to the machine so first, you just want to do everything in reverse, which means you want to get the hook into your throttle. And then we're going to hold this up in the air. Now, this can get a little tricky. Okay, so you have to get this choke rod. It has to go through this little slot. All right, that's going to, it has to go through that slot, just like so. Now, I'm going to let this sit here for a second and let you guys know about gasket right here. On here, it's actually stuck to it. Usually they come off with the carburetor. We're gonna replace this. So I have a new one. Okay, we're gonna put that. What I, what I normally do is I'll put the gasket on the carburetor. I'll put one bolt through it and then I'll start to screw that because that gasket will stay on that stud. I'll put the other one through and then start screwing that in a little bit. Now they should push through, but they actually, they'll stay on there like that. And then you just line up your carburetor to the, to the elbow. And you have to make sure that your, you have to make sure your ride's in that slot. That's your choke rod. I'm gonna go ahead and tighten these up. I'm gonna go ahead and use a quarter inch ratchet to tighten these up. I don't like to use the electric tool a better feel for tightening them. Got to go ahead and put a new O-ring in the elbow here, which is this. All right, and it's just going to fit right here. And then I'm going to go ahead and put the one nut. The other one. We're going to go ahead and put the spring. This is an anti-vibration. This is an anti-surging spring. It's supposed to help the surging. If the carburetor, if everything is running correctly, it shouldn't surge anyway. If you have a surging problem, you may have a carburetor issue. But a brand new carburetor should not. It should surge probably in the beginning, but not after it warms up. Okay, so that's on there. Okay, so we have to, we have to get the choke set. And you go up to your throttle and you're going to put your throttle up on fast and there should be an indentation most machines still have the indentation if it's a real old machine you may not feel it but up on fast and then what happens is there's a little paddle right here this little paddle right here gets real close to this link and then when you take it up the choke now when i take it up the choke you're going to see this part right here will move and then when this closes it'll actually come It'll come right there. So when I hit choke, all the way up on choke, what happens is it bottoms out right here. Okay, so that's a stopping stud for this choke. There's a stopping stud for that choke right there. So you have to remember when it's off choke, it's got to be totally off. When it's on, 
you got to make sure it's totally on or it won't get enough choke. So that's pretty much set up just perfectly. And if you need to adjust that, you would adjust that down here. Okay, and everything is set up the way it should be. But if you need to adjust the throttle cable just a little bit to get this choke to work on and off correctly, that's how you would do it. Everything is looking good right here. So while you're up on choke works, then you come down off a choke and then you're in a fast position and it's off in your full, full throttle. Okay, so as far as getting this to work right here, I'm also putting an inline fuel shutoff in. So it's actually going to work out perfectly because the inline fuel shutoff is going to make a little bit more room for the fuel line. I forgot to tell you, you guys needed a pair of cutters if you're putting in the inline fuel shutoff, just to cut this in half. And if your fuel line is questionable, then don't use that fuel line and replace it. This is an inline fuel shutoff. Usually up is uh, up like that is off, and then inline like this is on. Okay. It's nice to have these, and then I, I like to use screw-on clamps just because uh, they work better. And that'll give us a little extra room, so we're going to go ahead and cut the fuel line right about, take these off here. I'm going to take this elbow off. Before I go any further, make sure you plug back in your shutoff solenoid. Okay, just like so. And then to know that your shutoff solenoid is working, you just turn your key, your ignition key on. Let's go ahead and see if you can hear this. I'm gonna go ahead and put the camera down there so you can hear it. Okay, so it's working properly. You can hear that click. Let me go ahead and put this clamp on here. We were having a very Big thunderstorm, you see the lights flickering. And I'm gonna leave it sitting like this because I know our cover comes over here and it's gonna be just easy to reach down. Turn that off and on like that. Okay, with the fuel off, this is in the off position right here. I don't need this any longer. Put your cover back on Okay, your cover, it's going to be a little bit, it's going to be a little bit snug going on your O-ring here. And also over here, where these little teeny fingers are, okay, this one here, actually, you have to put one on one side of the plastic. This one goes on the inside. This one goes on the outside. And it's basically going to be sliding in over here, okay. It's a little tricky to show you guys this, but you have to make sure. And also, over here. These guys here have to fit into the slot up here also. So it's, it's a little bit hard for me to show this to you, but when you go ahead and put everything down, it's kind of has to go, it's like a puzzle and everything's got to line up just right. And when it is lined up correctly, it should tube will be kind of centered in here. If it's a cock, cocked to one side or cocked to the other side, it's probably not correct. But that looks real good right there. I'm gonna go ahead and tighten these up. Okay, and then you can always check by turning your engine over just to make sure you're not rubbing on anything before you crank it up, and that sounds good. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put the uh, new pre-filter in. Now, the pre-filter should have a little teeny bit of oil on here, not much, because you over-oil it, it'll go through the paper of the air filter and ruin it. So some people do and some people don't. I like to have a little bit of oil on here, but for this purpose of this video, we're just going to put it in now. And the screen always goes against the paper of the filter, okay? Just remember that screen against the paper, put the paper filter in like so. Okay, so the air filter's on. Now, if you start to something run it, and let's just say your idle is way too high or way too low, this is the idle screw right here to the carburetor. 
That's the only screw that you mess with. They are non-adjustable carburetors, so they either run right or they don't. But if you do have a high idle or a low idle, this screw here may help you out. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn the fuel on. I'm gonna go ahead and put the seat back. Emergency brakes should be on. Put it up on choke. See if this thing will run. Now it's gonna take a little bit to get the fuel through the fuel pump and into the carburetor. He's got a rod knot. All right, so that idle is definitely low. And this guy's got a pretty bad rod knot. Turn that in a little bit. Now, as the engine warms up, that idle will go up, so I'm not going to go too much more crazy than that. Rip it up. Okay, so that pretty much sums it up for how to install a carburetor on a 16 horsepower Briggs & Stratton Intex single cylinder engine with overhead valves. If you guys um, like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe, share my channel with your friends, and I'll catch you guys on the next one.